something a little different this Saturday. Um, we've got this huge wisteria. This really is like a trunk. Um, now, I can't really call this an air layer, but we saved this tree in a similar kind of manner. Um, this got knocked over last year. We were removing a big bridge from a, from a garden that was kind of being dismantled. Um, and this was growing up it. And it got knocked over, like I say. There was basically no root. You had some little kind of stumps where they had just been ripped clean off. All the bark kind of stripped away from them. Um, it didn't look good. And it, you know, obviously the size of it midsummer wasn't a great situation. Um, but, you know, we immediately put it in here, packed it with moss, cut back some of what was there, um, and it's just absolutely thrived. So, like I say, today we're going to take it to its new home. It's never going to be a bonsai. Um, although a great trunk there, if you look at that, really is a whopper. And some, you know, some great details in there. I'm going to have to show you the size of it. I've got quite big hands. Um, yeah, it's a big tree. So I'll see you down at the uh, the lake house where it's going to be planted up. Like yeah. <laughs> it hasn't got roots or has got roots. It has, yeah, because not, not many people would believe that one. Well, there we are. That was a lot easier than me digging a hole. Jeff kindly brought a digger over. And we've, um, we've put this in its new, new home. We've put it close to the bank here so it gets plenty of moisture. And we'll build a kind of little frame and maybe make some kind of weeping tree feature out of this wisteria. Um, but an absolute beast to have recovered from very little, or no root. And like I say, a monster, absolute monster trunk. Well, while I'm here at the lake house, um, where we just planted that wisteria stump. I'll just give you a little peek at some of these pines and looks like a needle juniper over there. This is a, that looks like a black pine maybe. Really, yeah, it's got some nice specimens here. Some ABs, I think, of some description. I'm not too sure on these blue ones exactly what they are. Um, this seed is my favourite. I can't find one of these for love nor money, really. Um, the colour of that foliage, and it's always like this. I'll show you a few other bits while we're walking around. Got another cedar over here that I'm very envious of. This one here. Those tiny little needles. Really nice trunk on this one as well. More pines. More blue spruce. So many. I'd get out of control trying to air layer these and mucking about with them if I owned all these. <laughs> Lovely pine there as well. That's quite a nice colour, that one. Some mungo pine or something. A little weeping Norway spruce. That one there. I just had to show you these. So if you can see that golden elm in the background, that's a big tree. We moved that last year. I think I spoke up fine. Another cedar here. Tiny little needles. I'm going to see if I can sneak a little air layer in here at some point. Ask Jeff nicely. So yeah, for the, the pine and kind of conifer nuts. Something really nice here. Phenomenal collection of of trees. 
really nice. Like, I think that's a Mexican pine there. It might be a, a Bhutan pine. Can you see that purple weeping beech there? I got an air layer off that last year. Well, it took three years to get off, and we moved that tree as well last year. I'll show you something else we moved last year as well, which is quite a, quite an achievement. All of this digger, by the way. Um, so we moved that, and we also moved this paper bark maple. It's a sagrissium. We're going a big, big tree. I kind of this was in an awkward position, so I uh, hand dug a trench around it, and we pulled it out with a digger. No damage, and it's. Woken up really happy.